What is up, everyone? I am Jake Blaine with Apocalypse Movies, and I am joined today by Jacob Bartley and Brian Avalicino, and we are here to do a full spoiler discussion, spoiler breakdown, geek out of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, we are here to do everything Star Wars, talk about the film, talk about the characters, the story, what it means, what's going to happen, um, just everything we possibly can about this movie uh, in full nerd fashion, I guess we could say. And we're going to have a great time doing it. We're excited. We've been waiting to do this. And as you can tell, we're doing all audio because it is much more comfortable for us, relaxing, um, and it's going to be a really, really good time. So uh, I know you guys are excited. Um, you know, we've seen the movie. Jacob, you've seen it twice. I've seen it twice. Yeah. Brian's only seen it once. Second time but was last night. I think, I think we can, uh, it's safe to say that we're all going to see it multiple times going forward. It's only been a yes. week. Or a little under a week, I should say. Not and even. so... Um, Dude, it's what's today Monday. So it's it was been last like Thursday. Three days, three yeah. or four days. Technically. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we have a lot to talk about, obviously. Mm. And if you're tuning in, you know that we're gonna get into some major spoiler talk here. So you have been warned. Uh, let's just kind of before we get into the actual details of everything, kind of overview of how you liked it, what you thought, um, did it live up to the hype, etc. Jacob, you and I haven't talked about it yet because you basically you had we saw a twelve thirty showing. Yeah, we so saw it, it was, together, but it was very rough to kind of stay. Everybody stand had after to go late. home right after. Exactly. You know? So, just some quick thoughts, you know, a few uh, thirty to forty seconds here of what you kind of thought of the Last Jedi. Just well, first and foremost, I love the movie like with all my heart. It's it's an amazing film, and it's a great Star Wars movie. It is the most unpredictable Star Wars movie. And one of the most unpredictable movies I've ever seen. Yeah, I would Bec have to agree. And I think part of that has to do with because we have so much expectations for this movie. So because we speculate so much and have expectations. We spent two years points, theorizing. Exactly. So you don't do that with much, many movies. Like maybe some comic book movies like Avengers Infinity War. Like you don't do that with any other type of film. So for that reason, it was so unpredictable. This movie, I my mind was blown because I could not like some of the things that happened i had no idea were coming and we'll get into that in a little bit but yep. i think because i'm a huge star wars fan because the most of the things that shocked me i loved um i ended up really loving this movie um it, yeah it's it's amazing it is and you know you uh, the, the word unpredictable is a perfect definition of what this film is um, and the point I've gone back to in our two reviews, the point I'm going to go back to now, but I was sitting next to Brian when the screening, and at one point in the movie, he got up and said, what is going on? He had no idea what was going on in the movie. We were so surprised by things, the twist, the turns, I, the direction I it took. I, I got out of my yeah. seat and put my hands The direction up, like, it took, was, it's like, just... going crazy. It's such a, a, such a surprising movie, and... Um, and it's so different from anything we've seen in Star Wars, like you had mentioned, and that's what makes it so great. Because we've been waiting for something new, unique, and different, and we love The Force Awakens for what it is, but this is something, this is a completely new entity, which makes it so good. And so, um, Brian, I know how you feel about this movie. We've talked about it multiple times. We obviously, we, we see each other every day, but for those of, for who don't know how you feel about this movie, how can you subscribe or describe The Last Jedi? Uh... Twists and turns is the best way that I would describe it. Uh, you don't expect probably half of what's coming in the movie. Yeah, I would and say. just it just blows your mind every single time something new happens and keeps you on your edge of your, keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole entire time. Literally. Yeah. It's I... <laughs> it was one of the most fun movies that I've ever gotten to watch in the theater. That's what's surprising about this movie is that you know, Ryan Johnson, obviously, he's known for his kind of darker, serious films. Yes. And, you know, if you've seen uh, Brick, if you've seen Looper, they're very serious. This movie, right off the bat, is all about the humor. Like, it has a great action sequence of Poe Dameron. He's in his X-Wing, him and BB-8, and they're, they're going up against the First Order. And that horrifying-looking Dreadnought, the biggest shit we've ever seen ever in Star Wars. Um, and he's just Poe Dameron. He pulls some quips at, at General Hux, and you know they, they kind of they go back and forth, and right away we know that this is something different in Star Wars. That this isn't going to be your regular film, um, and I appreciate it so much just because Ryan Johnson took so many risks through this movie, and we're going to get to the Kylo Kylo Ren and Rey stuff. We're going to get to the Luke stuff, but let's talk a little bit about Poe Dameron. I kind of want to start with him because he's the first character we see. Um, 
his his role and his his significance got bumped up a big time compared to the Force Awakens in this movie. Yes, and it Brian did. and I had talked about this, and we said that he is basically the Finn role in this movie because of how much he is in the movie. He felt more prominent to me than he did Finn, than he did Rose, than he did even Leia at times because at one point in the movie, Leia says. Why are you looking at me? Follow him. Yeah, they're setting him up to take on Leia's role yes. once she's gone. Yes. Um, he's going to be the leader of the resistance, the leader of the rebellion, and they're not subtle about it. They they're hinting that, but it's not like on the nose where it's a bad thing. But well, and he's like the I, ultimate rebel, re, 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 rebeller, like rebel, rebel, yeah, I guess. Yeah, because he rebel. rebels against the rebels. Well, like, yeah, and like the scene where he was about to shoot even up in the a storm. The beginning of the movie, the opening scene, and by the way, I'm trying to think of a better one but this might be the best opening to any star wars movie and i i there are some that can challenge it i episode three the about coruscant that, scene dude that's so funny i was just thinking the same exact thing yeah. i was like that's the only but this, one but you've never seen someone a single it. attack going up and dude, the first order is like how can we stop this guy how poe just flies onto is that the dreadnought that the he's dreadnought. on top of and he's just taking out all the guns by himself and this is a and favorite like, of his because he's all about the aerial shots. Yeah, yeah. I'm anything in space, you've got me hooked. So, <laughs> so right away you're like, yeah, it's the best yeah, movie um, ever. Yeah. No, I was oh, I was hooked. Once in the, um, I can't I'm drawing a blank his name. The captain that of Captain the Bucks? No, oh the other guy, the, the guy that captain yeah, the guy, Kennedy, the guy that died, Captain yeah, Kennedy. Yes, the guy yeah. that died. He was awesome. I loved him. He just seemed like I know I was a little ass. upset when he passed when he died. I <laughs> yeah. was like, "Oh, this guy's dope. I, he's going to be throughout the whole movie." Yeah. And, no. He he was awesome. I loved that whole entire aspect of just Poe being able to bring down basically the whole entire ship. I mean, minus the fact that Rose's sister was really the one. That yeah, that the that ship. was an that was an emotional tug there cuz and we didn't we didn't know the connection she had to the the rebellion obviously or the resistance at that point, but the whole medallion thing and kind of how she sacrificed and everything. That was definitely an emotional tug. But going back to Poe, um, it does start off with him opposing orders. And it's not just anybody's orders. It's There's Leia's Leia. orders. Yeah. She's and who, who has ever gone against Leia and, and it's ended up well? Yeah. Like, I mean, he did get demoted for it. Yeah. <laughs> and by, he got stunned the, like, yeah, badly. By Leia, which was like a, a very surprising scene at that. Yeah. Which, and oh, also it was. Really cool to kind of see Leia pull up a blaster and just... Several times, though. Yeah. No, she she's a badass. A blaster, so, yeah, um, yeah Poe, kick-ass, the way he kind of... And it's not even an, uh, an X-Wing most of the time. It's just kind of on the ground, leading the charge. Well, that opening scene... He's in his X-Wing, and yes. then he loses the X-Wing shortly after that. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of in this commander role, or, like, we just see him on the ship, you know, whether it's going against certain other characters and stuff like that. But, yeah, he took he leapt into a more prominent role in this movie, for sure. Because his role was very minimal in yes. Force Awakens. Because well, and he was supposed you guys to talked die. About it, that he was supposed to die. So they went from this character supposed to dying to bringing him back in The Force Awakens, and then he's in the third act of the... He's in the first act and the third act of The mm -hmm. Force Awakens. He's a main character throughout this whole movie. So I I feel like I like Poe more after this. And Oh, he's so awesome. He's, you know, I liked Poe in The Force Awakens, but he wasn't the one of the characters I was talking about He was about just the flyboy. I liked him, but mm -hmm. he wasn't one of my top three, four, five favorite characters. But after this movie, he is. For yeah, sure. we, had, we had talked about that he was probably the best supporting character other than the main three in Luke, Kylo, and Rey, obviously. You have those three kind of at the top. Can you imagine but... what they would have done if they would have killed him in the first one? Yeah. Yeah, it would have well, been a... It would have had to be Finn, but that would just be weird. It'd be weird to not see him around. Yeah. Very weird to not see I don't, him around. We wouldn't even think about it, though, because yeah. it would have yeah. just happened and we would have moved on. But, it's dude, it's Oscar Isaac, how great of an actor he is. Yep. There's one scene where he gets really upset in the movie, and he's yelling, and he does it several times, but there's a certain scene where he gets very upset, and, like, he's just... And we know he's a great actor. Mm -hmm. We've seen him doing this for years, but, yeah, he's... I'm so happy that he's in the Star Wars universe. Like it's it's awesome. So the the introduction of of the film, the opening scene, kind of leads to the introduction of Laura Dern's character, uh, Vice Admiral Holdo. Um, there's a big sequence, and we can kind of talk about before we get to Holdo. But the the scene from the trailer where Kylo is attacking Leia's ship. That's kind of the big part of this first act. Everything kind of goes down. It kind of leads into everything going forward. Um, in the trailer, we see that Kylo is. Deciding whether or not he's going to blow up the ship. He's whether or not shooting it. We find out the answer to this. He holds back. He pulls his hands off the trigger. That's huge. It's a huge That's moment. huge. It's a huge that moment. he doesn't do it. And it, it shows that 
there's still light in him. Oh yeah, definitely, there definitely. Is. And we'll Some talk time. about what happens at the end of the movie, <laughs> but um, it's his it's his wingmen that shoot down the ship, and the entire bridge, all of the big people in the resistance get shot out to space. Freaking Admiral Ackbar. We think that the opening of the movie is Leia dying. Is Leia dying? I, not gonna I see straight her up anymore. thought she was dead. I so was did like, I. I. And I honestly, I was a little upset. I was like, that's how they're gonna handle it. So did I. I was like, wow. Yeah, and it's very interesting. Because that then, was the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought, yeah, at the time I was like, oh, that's kind of a crappy way to go out. Like, it was so quick and just kind of so sudden. Yeah. Um, but little do we know, just, you know, a little bit later after some scenes, we see her floating in space. She's kind of freezing up. We see her hand twitch, and she force pulls herself back into the ship. Um, this is obviously a big moment in Star yes, Wars. Yes, it is. Uh, Leia, we've known Leia has the force in some yes. capacity, but we've never physically seen her use it. And this isn't just... Using it to grab a broomstick, per se, yeah, like at the no. end of the movie. <laughs> she is pulling herself back in from space, from dying into a ship that's hundreds and hundreds of feet away. Um, she is extremely powerful. We've never seen that. She is extremely powerful. Now, we could talk about how she has the force and what it means, etc., etc. But I want to know, I'd rather know how you guys think about the scene and how it was handled. Because going forward, realistically, her having the force doesn't really have an impact on this trilogy because of the death of oh, Carrie of Fisher. So we know she's not going to be around. Yes. So how do you th- how do you feel about the scene rather than what do you think about the scene? The first time I saw it, I was caught off guard. I was like, "What's going on?" And it yeah. felt a little weird to me. Mm-hmm. But you know, after thinking about, it, well, I didn't have time to think about it during the movie because it was just everything's moving so fast. But after after the movie and then after watching it a second time, I really liked the moment because. You're never gonna see Leia pick up a lightsaber, or lightsaber. You're never gonna see Leia shoot force lightning. You're never gonna see her in an action fight using the force. So what ways can you show her using the force? We've seen it mentally several times, mm-hmm. even in the original trilogy. But this was a cool way to show that Leia's very powerful in the force without having her fight somebody. So for that reason, I liked it. I I thought it was awesome too. Um, I would have. I mean, this is nitpicking. I would have preferred her not to be so far away from the yeah. explosion so she didn't look like she was flying across the screen. But um, I at first I didn't even realize what was going on. I thought she was getting pulled in by a tractor beam or something. And then all of a sudden she's just pulling herself with force across the screen. And, I mean, it was perfect because it just confirmed that she has the force and is not some some princess that yeah. just is a good general also. Yeah, no, I see I I love the scene. I and I think that I love they finally showed that she has some kind of force abilities other than the mental stuff, other than just like, you know, thinking stuff or whatever it is. Um but it did feel very just kind of almost at a place in a way to me because it was just, it almost felt like it was just thrown in there personally. And I I kind of felt like you know, it, it could have been done a different way, and maybe being a shorter distance away from the ship might have been the solution. Um, but I still love the scene, like seeing her use the force is like jaw dropping because oh, she's yeah. Leia, well, she's, she's a Skywalker. Yeah, she was a far away from the ship, but it is space though. Like you yes. can just barely tap something yes. and it's gonna and go move. far Ex- distance. So, so she could have just pulled herself she, in at the first like second once, and then just, just like you know, and then she could have just, just floated, floated to space. Yeah. But it did. I understand like casual movie going fans or like maybe people who are hardcore Star Wars fans that didn't like it because it just looks goofy. Mm-hmm. It does. You you have Leia flying through space with her hand out like this. It looks goofy on a first glance but like what it means, how significant it is, that's what makes me appreciate it. Definitely, definitely. And so uh, moving on from, from you know, the giant Leia scene, we kind of have, we at this point we understand what the story is kind of really going to be about. The Resistance is on the run and, and at this point um, their their numbers are very low. The First Order is just like laughing at them. Oh, we're going to shoot them down in just a matter of hours. And did you guys like the way the story was kind of set up to where as far as everything going on with the Resistance and First Order, it all took place basically in one spot through the entire film well, of just like a took runaway. It place in space. Yes. But not in literally one spot, but like it was all in the space setting. Yes. Yeah. And so did you guys kind of like the way it was treated as far as 
The first order was cut, or the resistance was running away to a planet. The first order was slowly chasing them behind, because um, at this point the pacing did die down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it might have affected how you felt about how it was handled. Um, personally, I liked it because it was so different, and that's kind of the theme with this movie. Uh, we've never seen that. Like all of these Star Wars movies, we go to two, three, four planets at a time. This took place on, you know, obviously we see Octo, we see other places, but as far as the resistance of First Order go, it's one ship versus another, basically. And I thought it was handled very well because it's everything going on in one ship, it's everything going on in this ship. Uh, there was a mutiny with the resistance with Finn and Rose and Poe, basically. Um, you got Haldo and Leia and etc. But um, story-wise, do you think it could have been handled a little bit better, or did you appreciate how it was kind of uh, uh, slowed down a little bit and just told at that kind of glance. I was fine with it. I, I in the beginning, thought the story was going a little too fast, but the way it tapered off, I, it, I enjoyed it. I liked how they did it. I was fine with the Resistance story being that they're trying to escape because... It's a direct pickup of The Force Awakens. Yeah, it, it was needed, and I don't know if I would have wanted them having a big, long, drawn-out fight throughout the movie with all the other stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. So for me, it worked perfectly. No, that, that makes sense because, and we'll get to it, but the focal point of this movie was Kylo, Rey, and Luke. Yeah. And it never took away from what was going on there. It, it was just a side story that needed to be told with all these other characters, and I think it was done very well, like Brian said. Yeah, I liked it because we've never had a Star Wars movie where we spent so much time in space, mm -hmm. and that was really cool because, we've, like you said, we spent a lot of time on planets, like different planets on the ground, and this was just something different. Like We might not ever get another Star Wars movie that has this much time in space. Yeah. Maybe we'll get one that's all in space, but as far as a saga film goes, this movie spent... A lot of time in space and it was really cool because one of the best things about Star Wars is the space battles and we got several space battles and different types of space battles whether it's you know <clears throat> Poe attacking the Dreadnought or you know the the TIE fighters and Kylo Ren attacking their ship like there was so many different types of space battles and it it evened out because everything that's taking place with you know with Kylo and Rey and Luke and Rey and Snoke it's all inside of a ship or like on a planet, on the ground. So it really balanced out for me, especially in the third act when the, the cut scenes and stuff like that. We'll talk about that. Everything kind of just kind of blended together. Yeah, came together, so like yeah. it all comes together at the end. But mm -hmm. I I did like how they were, you know, kind of just spent so much time in space with the First Order, with, with hyperspace tracking, which was something very new because one of the things in Star Wars is and you get away in hyperspace, you're good. Yeah. And now the First Order has figured out a way well, to and, track and here's And here's an interesting thing, and I don't know if you have seen this, but there was an Easter egg of hyper hyperspeed tracking in Rogue One. When Jin Erso is searching the files on Scarif 4... Of course there was, though. She says, Hy hyperspeed tracking a project or something like that. She says it of in Rogue One. Of course there was, because... And it's perfect. They're planning this whole universe yeah. together, and... Of course, we would never have thought of that when watching Rogue One, but now, like that, yeah, that makes well. And here, sense. here's and this, you'll appreciate this, but this is a callback to to canon books. It was created by Hux's father. Really? Yep. Back in the day of the Empire. Okay. Did they establish that in the books? It was in the books. There's a there's a scripture that talks about Hux and how he kind of created it. Oh wow! Which was is, that in one of the? I aftermath think novels? I think it might have been in the aftermath yeah. novel. We kind of glazed over it because we didn't really know yeah, what it was about. We weren't thinking about it. Yeah. yeah, but now it's a prominent but thing see, in Star Wars. Look War. at all these seeds they're planting. Exactly. In the in the movies, in the books, in the novels, and everything like that. Yeah, it's that's really cool. All right, so let's get into the chunk of it now. We uh, we kind of stayed away from the Luke, Kylo, and Ray stuff, but let's get to that <laughs> that meetup of of Luke and Ray. The final moment of the Force Awakens is finally played out, and I think I could say for myself. I, it is. I was not expecting that scene to play out how it did. I loved it. Um, you know, we the end of the Force Awakens, we see Ray holding out her hand with the lightsaber, and Luke just giving her this weird look. Well, he takes it and he tosses it over a freaking cliff. Like, what? What do we think about this? Like, do you like how it was handled? Was it just a funny moment to do? Did it actually mean something? I mean. 
Because I'm kind of just like speechless about it because he just literally tossed it over his shoulder over a cliff. Yeah, I didn't love this moment. Yeah. I didn't. I, because, so the movie starts off, there's a lot of comedy to start mm-hmm. off with, with the Poe and like teasing The Hux, Hux. yeah. I, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> like, that was, because Hux is so serious. So that was hilarious. But then it's like, you have this tone and it's like, and I want, because there's something about Star Wars. Star Wars has comedy. It always has. I mean, I don't know if the prequels had comedy, but they, they tried. They tried. To, I don't. They I don't know tried. if they tried to be funny, but they were funny. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but like it's the original trilogy, The Force Awakens, like Rogue One has subtle, small mm-hmm. comedy. Like mm-hmm. Star Wars has always had comedy, but like there's also the part of Star Wars that's very special and like very serious and like I don't know. And I just wanted that moment between Luke and Ray to be something like magical and serious and when he throws it it just took me out I'm like what's going on so i i'm a little bit torn about look i love luke skywalker in this movie where he ends up but i'm a torn i'm just torn because it's different from what i wanted but that doesn't mean i don't love what they did and i so i didn't like that he just threw the lightsaber like i for me i took it as let's get a cheap laugh from the from the fan, from the audience. That's how I took it. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah, I I kind of go back and forth on this one because we've been waiting two years for this one. Two years for this moment, and it did kind of feel like it was just a big joke in a way. Like they were kind of almost like punking us with what That's we were That's what thinking. I'm thinking. Like, I feel like they were trolling us. Like, yeah. haha, you guys speculated about this moment for, for two, two years, years, and we're just going to like, yeah. Oh, like, and we, we always talk about like, I want to hear that conversation. I want to hear that conversation. There wasn't a conversation. He Do literally it. threw it and walked away. Master Skywalker, like yeah. And so, um, I don't know. Maybe after I watch it a couple more times, I'll maybe appreciate it differently. But I did, the first time I saw it, I really disliked it. Second time, I was like, okay, it's not so bad. So maybe it'll grow on me. Okay. But Brian, you said you like it, I'm so I'm com- curious. One hundred percent complete I'm opposite. I thought Why? it was hilarious. I loved it. It was perfect to me. This serious moment that's been dragged on for two years, and he just tosses a lightsaber. It was just kind of like another... There was a couple times in this movie where I felt like they were just kind of giving you like the ultimate... Like, F you. F you. They were. And that's, that's that exactly was one of them, doing. and I absolutely loved it because I'm expecting this like, oh, here it is, finally, two years, serious moment. And he just hucks it backwards and keeps going, which to me kind of kept with how he acted the whole time in the movie, where he just didn't care does, about no, the force. You're right about that for sure. So, to me, I loved it. It makes me laugh. I think about it, and it makes me laugh. I loved it. That part to me, I, it was perfect. I, All right, interesting. I appreciate well, it. I appreciate the the different point of view. That's for sure. I mean, it brings something into the new table. Yeah. Um. All right, well, so uh, Ray and, and Luke's relationship, I think this is obviously one of the key things in the film. Um, they go back and forth between the entire movie. Uh, it's good, it's bad, it's it's different. You know, Luke is very hesitant at first, obviously, and then he offers to help out with some teachings in the Force. Um, I know you said you liked the way that Luke ended up in the film, but did you like the, the journey it took in the middle of the film to get there? Yes, and the thing is, my first viewing experience is way different than my second viewing experience. And the first time I saw it, for myself, I was very disappointed because I wanted, you know, and it's kind of kind of just wanted more. I wanted Luke to look. I knew he was it was gonna take him a while to come around to training her. I knew it was gonna he was gonna give her trouble at first because it's in the trailers, Mm -hmm. and I I felt I wanted. Him to, you know, give her a hard time and not make it easy, but eventually she get, for some reason, whether it's R2 or Yoda or somebody, like, that gets to him and, like, he realizes, I have to train this girl. And I wanted him to actually train her. I felt the and same way. while he doesn't physically train her, he doesn't teach her how to use a lightsaber, and I think, I don't think he needs to, because we know Rey knows how to fight. She establishes that in the beginning of The Force Awakens. And basically, it's just swinging a sword. So, I think what Luke did train her in is the uh, the emotionally connecting to the Force, which he did. Which, the more and more I think about the movie after my second viewing, 
I'm okay with it. Like I'm gradually loving what they did, but it's just taking me some time to get over my personal wants, and and that's I gotta separate it. You well, know? We, like again, again, we've spent two years talking about. Oh my God, we're gonna see Luke pick up a lightsaber. Oh my God, we're gonna see him fight the Knights of Ren. Oh my God, you know, two months ago we're talking about how there could be a possible fight scene between Ray and Luke just to get Luke to finally realize what he's doing. Like we've had all these expectations, and when we don't meet those expectations or just get them, it has a different outlook on everything. And that, and you still like it, but you're you're trying to make yourself, you're trying to win yourself over just because it's different from what you were yes. expecting. And that's kind of how so I felt as well. What they did ultimately is amazing what they did with the luke and ray story is incredible it's genius but it's hard for me to detach myself from what i wanted if that makes sense yeah no i i wish there would have been a little bit more training personally yes. it kind I, of like the scene where yeah. where he's telling her like what do you see oh, i like, see reach the, out yes yeah. like that that's a great that, scene that's the one scene that pops in my mind but there's I'm, not like, really anything else it. after that yeah. and you know we see we see Ray confront Luke about um, the Kylo Ren situation later on in the film. Uh, we see Ray training on her own a lot, um, you know, cutting the rock down so or going down the ground. All right, so you've only seen it twice, right? Yes. So when she's swinging the lightsaber around and Luke is watching her, does he have a tear roll down the side of his face? Uh, I did not notice. I, I, I swear, I think he does. And I don't know what that means. I think, does that mean he misses, like... He misses training he's proud, Jedi. Maybe, yeah. He's proud of her, but keep an eye out because okay. I'm pretty sure when he's watching her, there's a tear. I think he goes down the left side of his cheek, and that's why, like, when she knocks a rock down and it falls, he goes away so fast, and he's like emotionally torn because I think he wants to train her, but because of what happened with Ben Solo and the Jedi Order that he tried to recreate, he his, can't. His bearish bow. Yeah, his bearish I know, bow. right? <laughs> yeah, that hasn't even been talked about since the movie was yeah. released. But uh, Brian, I mean, what did you think about the whole whole Ray Luke situation and how they handle Luke, how they handle Ray, and kind of uh, put them together per se? I'm agree, but disagree with how you guys are saying it. I thought it was the perfect amount of time. I didn't want them to spend a lot of time training her. She, because I want her to almost find her own way about going with things. Like, I want her to have her, her basic concept of Jedi, Sith, minimal training, but enough to, like, justify when she does certain things. But I want her to be so powerful in her own sense that she can do it without Luke. So, for me, I didn't want to see Luke train her for half the movie lead up to this big dramatic scene so for me it was perfect amount of time mark hamill knocked it out of the park he's freaking so, hilarious he's so good he brings emotions that you don't even expect and the relationship between them i loved it i had no complaints whatsoever about the two and i think that what he is saying is i think they gave him that I oh think, yeah, you know Ray found her own way. You know after well, that's exactly what happened. After, what after you just explained yeah. is exactly what and happened. And after she, certain things happen, yeah, that's kind of, she goes about her own. Like she figures out, I have to do this on my yeah. own. I need to go and you know she eventually leaves Octo. Uh, Chewie drops her off. She yeah. goes to the First Order. She takes out or she sees Kylo. Kylo takes her to Snoke, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, it's interesting how they handled it all because we again we had all these expectations. Um, and I think once we get further away from the movie, we'll start letting go of our expectations and just appreciating it for what it is. And don't get me wrong, like I love the movie, but I'm just I'm still so stuck in my own wants. Like I, it makes me sad that we're we're never gonna see Ray and Luke fight side by side with lightsabers. Like, am I wrong for wanting that? Like as a well, Star Wars fan, you and, know? and if you don't know what we're talking about, and you're listening to this, you're crazy. Because and I hope you've yeah, seen the movie, not, but. Yeah. Luke is now a Force ghost, course, and we'll yeah. get to that near the end of, the, uh, of this because it's kind of the finale of the film. But um, I do want to point out that he did see, he did say, "See you around, kid." 
oh, in the yeah. film. Yeah. So maybe he can project himself from Force Ghost to Force Ghost around the galaxy. I mean, I don't know. Oh, I have Plus, no doubt that he's gonna be back. No, like, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think so the only thing that's I, why he said that. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that I was disappointed, I wanted to seem to use the green lightsaber more. Yeah, I agree. That was the only thing. Like whenever he grabbed the blue one, I was like, damn it, I don't want the blue one. I want the green one because that's his. That's the one he made. But other than that, so in the if you guys notice this, I mean, it, it doesn't ultimately matter, but when when he pulls out his green lightsaber to maybe strike down Kylo, mm-hmm. did you know what color Kylo's lightsaber was? It was blue. Yeah. It was, yeah. So that might have been Kylo's own lightsaber, or did he somehow get the blue one, the one from that Maz Kanata eventually has? Here's the thing. He says in The Force Awakens, That's that belongs to me. me. That's what I'm thinking. It That can either be taken as... Because it was my grandfather. And maybe that's why Luke tosses to it away. Yeah. I mean, he probably hates that lightsaber. <laughs> that is very interesting. Yeah. Um, one last thing before we move on to some other stuff, but there's been a lot of conversation going around the internet, around the kind of Star Wars community, as far as um, people are asking the question, did Rey, did she learn to use a lightsaber in the Force too quickly? Like, was she too powerful too quickly? Because, again, this movie, it takes place directly after The Force Awakens, which is just days or hours after she, you know, picked up a lightsaber for the first time. Do you think that maybe she kind of w- was into the, the force and the lightsaber ability too quickly compared to other people who are as just as powerful as her? So it's funny that you point on this because I had just watched a video of, um, who was it? It was Phasma, Finn, uh, Daisy Ridley... Uh, and if, I want to say Mark Hamill and uh, Laura Dern. And it was about basically them going on Google searches and coming back with certain results. And one of them was uh, in it, how does Ray beat uh, Kylo in the first movie without her training so much? And the reaction Daisy Ridley gave was this scrunched face of, why is that hard to believe? She's really powerful. To me, that told me a lot that she is powerful, I think, more than people realize in that to the point where she doesn't even need to be trained by Luke to extensively to be able to beat down Kylo Ren and stuff. And I don't, th- I don't think people realize how strong she is. And that's it's kind of starting to play out a little bit that she's going to be pretty freaking powerful. Well, and we see that through the movie, uh, and specifically that fight scene with Kylo Ren against the Praetorian guards. Uh, we see how powerful it is and how kind of strong she is in the Force and the Force ability. But, but also in The Force Awakens, when she beats Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren is bleeding to death also. But, so. but she at, at, there's, two, there's two parts to that fight. There's the fight. There's the fight before Kylo says, The Force, I can teach you. And she kind of builds herself up. And then there's the fight after that where she kind of comes into her own yeah. as far as ability goes. Kylo Ren was injured, but she definitely had some ability there as far as choreography oh, of goes. And no, but, I, uh, oh, absolutely. But we learned that she knows how to fight. It doesn't. I don't think swinging a lightsaber and knowing how to fight with the staff is much different. Oh, yeah, she's like, been training with that staff for years. She's been fighting. She beats yeah. those two guys' butts like early yeah. on in the film. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like people are missing the detail that Kylo Ren was bleeding out to death. So, I full healthy Kylo Ren would have smacked Ray around. He would have, but he was bleeding out, and we saw that. And Finn even got him on the shoulder a little mm-hmm. bit. He and he just killed his dad. He was emotionally yeah. destroyed. So, I I can't argue with people who say how did Ray beat Kylo? They're, all the facts are right in front yeah. of their face. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. also they've already been establishing how that Ray is a unique type of power in the force she is like as far as somebody who is just discovering the force and like barely what is it less than a year Mm -hmm. obviously less than a year like what how long is three days three days or something from the end of the force awakens to the end of the last jedi it's like two days if that so no it's a couple it's a couple days yeah so this girl is like so powerful in the force on top of kylo dying while they're fighting so. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting going forward because, you know, I, after watching this film, and this is, this goes back to the initial teaser poster that was released, but she's the perfect blend of light and dark. The way, like, we've seen Luke 
go between both and kind of play with yeah. both. But Ray, she is able to the balance. It's the so balance. crazy and the balance she has. The more and more I learn about Star Wars, I'm starting to understand more through the canon, the novels, mm -hmm. and everything. Is that like there are certain things that you can do through the dark side that you can't do without the dark side. Like I, it's just. There's powers that you can tap into and strengths that you can tap into through the dark side. So if Rey can use that to become more powerful and fight Kylo or something like that, I think that's all good. Well, gravy. and you know, getting kind of the next topic, but she's tempted through this out this entire film because as we learn, her connection with Kylo is more than just what girl, like Kylo said from The Force Awakens. This is like... They were setting it up to be like almost like a twin telepathy type thing between the two of them. And I know a lot of people were kind of let on, oh my god, they're twins, they're brothers, sister, blah, blah, blah. But the connection they have and, and the ability that Ray has to kind of dabble in the dark side but not fully embrace it is nothing like we've seen before. Yeah. Ever. And that's what affected Kylo. They're complete opposites because they were both tempted by the same thing one chose one path, one but chose the other. She rejected it. Exactly. She made her decision. And yeah. she also uses it too. Mm -hmm. Because she she took advantage of it when she went to the First Order, when she went to Kylo, etc. But uh, speaking of the Kylo Ray connection, did you like kind of how that was thrown in there? Because it was a huge part of the story. Personally, I thought it was probably one of the best parts of this film. The way they were kind of seeing each other and talking through this movie. And, and almost using each other um, for certain things and like, oh my god, like you're Ben Solo, uh, Ray, I know your parents are, like all of this stuff. Um, it was a really, really cool layer and element to this film that I was not expecting. Yeah, I, I love it, honestly. I agree with you. It's, as far as like a story point, like a plot point, there are scenes and moments that I, that, we'll talk about soon that I really, that I like maybe more than this but as far as like an aspect of the film that you know created a story arc this is my favorite I love it so much and uh real quick I, I didn't notice this is the first time but the second time at the end of the movie when he goes down to pick up the dice and when she's shutting the door on the Millennium Falcon they're they're seeing each other again just like they are yeah yeah, yeah just yeah, like yeah. they are throughout mm -hmm. when she's on Octu mm -hmm. and he's you know yeah. on the ship they're looking at each other at yep. that moment. So they still have it. And he looks, yeah, after Snoke's dead, because Snoke yep. is the one who connected their minds. So at there, so however long this continues, whether it's only through episode nine, whether it's them, they go on into the next trilogy. They're connected forever. Ray, Kylo's the leader of the First Order. She's the leader of the Resistance, whatever. They're connected like that. And I think it's brilliant because they, I mean, I don't know, Kylo's so emotionally all over the place, but like <laughs> they despite the bigger war that's going on whether their connection is friendship romance whatever it's it's going to end up being it's like it's going to like transcend the war because they have a connection and understanding for each other that has nothing to do with the war like they she says he says you're not alone neither are you like they're they and i'm not saying this romantically it might be that but they like each other whether it's as friends, as romance buddies, I don't know. But. Well, Kylo, Kylo likes Rey because of who she is, what she has, how powerful she is, what she can be to him. Oh, if Rey because, likes Kylo because she still sees Ben Solo yeah, in him. Yeah, exactly. And just when she looks at him and says, "You're going to turn," like I can help you. Like, yep. Those scenes are so amazing. And right? Brian, it's not an effing romance. I. You know, we don't know that it's you know, not it a romance. Be. It you might know, be. I will say this. You see the way she's looking at him. I will say this. The best word you came up with to describe it is an infatuation. And you know, Kylo. Kylo has a thing for her yeah, because of what she, she does is. Have a thing for her because you know she, he might be a little tempted because he sees power in her. Yeah. You know, I kind of got this little like. Be my queen, I'll be the king. Let's rule the galaxy. That's what it felt like to me. But it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's coming from her side. I, I think don't she's know, trying man. to save I don't him. Know. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I think so too. Yeah. But he has a different angle. Personally, that's how I feel about it. I mean, how many movies have we seen though that 
the good guy saves the bad guy and they fall in love. A lot, but yeah, I mean, you never know. Yeah, it could I be. don't think like those are her intentions, but it's like, all right, Ray has been, and this is why she got close, so close to Finn is because she's never been she's close been to anyone. Alone. She's been alone her yep. whole entire life, and her friendship with Finn is different than her connection with Kylo. Her friendship with Finn was like real world, like just face to face conversation, interaction, becoming closer. Her connection to Kylo is through the Force, and they. Kylo and Rey saw into each other's souls. And, like, they felt each other's wants, desires, needs, hatred, everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can see her feeling that way about him after that. And feeling, even though he's a monster, how, like, good he has in him. And I can see her falling for him, honestly. Listen, do I think they're gonna actually make them fall in love? No. No, me neither. Does there potential... Is there potential? Can you see it? Absolutely. Per... Okay, I agree with that. Is there a potential? Sure, I guess. Like, anything can happen in these movies. But personally, I think the scene after the whole Praetorian Guard fight scene and everything, when Kylo's holding out his hand and, it, and Rey denies it, is the telltale well, sign. If anything, that smashes those That's the telltale sign. Theories, Look, yeah. I'm not going to be with you. We'll be on the opposite side. But we still understand each other. Well, like you said, the, movie, the connection. Yeah. They still have a connection, and they're always going to have that connection. But I think that when it comes down to life, death... Resistance, First Order, oh, yeah. her friends versus his friends, like, or not his friends, but his, I guess his army, whatever. Um, they will choose their sides. No, and that's I, what I think to be. they established in this movie that Ray is good, she's never going yep. dark. Kylo is bad, he's yep. never going light. And he's get only getting darker. Oh, yeah. I think they established that. <laughs> he's for only sure. getting darker. And I love it, honestly. Yeah, it's. I'm, still I'm still so out a happy bit. that he stayed dark, honestly. Me too, I'm but so I still. Happy have like one percent you're, that you're geo from the force awakens and the whole ray and finn yeah. romance no 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 no, no. What was I'm, our... I'm not oh i'm not talking about what holding out for that romance fin zone i'm talking fin zone that's what oh it was my God. it's <laughs> the fin zone i'm saying i think that there's still just the smallest of chance that he could end up hey, being good rose got fin zoned in this movie rose by got finn. fin zones hard by finn that's crazy hard, hard. <laughs> so finn fin zoned somebody that's that's insane